if any time I ever was doing bad and you called me, I fucking ran out of there trying to get home to go talk to you. What you have to understand is all this nonsense that we see on the internet, women are the prize. No, look, don't get me wrong. There's great women out there, and it, but you understand something. The nature of relationships is that when you decide to be in a relationship, you will go places you don't want to go. You will do things you don't want to do. You'll have to listen to things you don't have to listen to. You have to spend money you don't want to have to spend. You have to meet people you don't want to meet. That is that is part of the package, standard with the package. And what happens overall is that because you, because they have, women have taught you that they are the prize because you have a desire, you want to use them as a, as a dick cozy. You're willing to denigrate your manhood, your credibility, your authenticity. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. We, oh, right on 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 the last episode of the, of the of the podcast itself, it's like only bitches get closure. Like you don't want to talk to me when I called you yesterday and I called you fifty million times and, and like you just ignore all that. And you know when I called you like nights ago when you were at some apartment and I watched your fucking location. If you a man, you don't get close. You have to be able to take the information that's given you and and discern the decision to make. And in order to do that, you got to step back from the emotion of it. You got to step back from it and, and say, move yourself from it. What if it was a friend of mine who was doing this? Go ahead, Ha. My, my question, I was just curious, why do you think people need closure? A couple of things. Do you think men or women need closure more than the other? And why do you think people need closure? Is it just because they want to know why it fell apart? Because I don't think it makes you feel better. I they think they, it, they know why, but they want to hear it. You know why? Because they don't really want to believe what they already know is the truth. They need I, to hear it verbalized so that they, they like, OK, she, like if you if you if you got to if you get some number for some girl or if you say you say you get an Instagram. And you like, you know, you get your Instagram, you hey, hey, met you at so and so and so and she doesn't respond. She's not interested. Even if y'all had a great conversation in order to exchange, and I don't even understand why you would ask for Instagram. You should always ask for the number because it's personal. The, the Instagram. Yeah, maybe it's a new generational thing. I don't yeah, know. But it, it's got to stop because you listen. The only reason why women can treat you that way is if you let them treat you like this is like the whole my whole thing with the phone calls. Nobody talks on the phone. I get it. If you if somebody's if somebody is is uh on the peripheral of your life i can understand you texting them not texting them whatever the, whatever the hell it is but if you're if you're literally trying to be intimate with somebody you want to get to you want to get to cheeks there's listen there, let's think about it like this there is nothing more intimate than you taking up space in somebody's body it doesn't get any more intimate than that not only are you together with a closeness, but you are inside somebody's body. And for somebody to allow you that, that or for a woman to allow that, there is a submission that takes place. And there's a level of trust and submission, unless she's nuts. But usually there's a submission and an openness and a hunger to let that happen. So I don't understand how you could go from, and don't get me wrong, there's, there's definitely times where Women are just like, oh, I want to I want to F this dude. I want to smash this dude and keep it moving. I, yeah, that's true. But that's if you want there's an intimate element. Of, and this is why even women who who got a high body count, they don't sleep with the same dude for a long period of time, because on an emotional level, allowing somebody to take up space in your body is a personal thing. So the thing about closure it's like I I've allowed this body, this person inside me or I've allowed this person inside. And for a guy, it's I've allowed this person in, in my, to see the, 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 the tender parts of my personality, to see my weaknesses, my vulnerabilities. And I don't want to believe that this person doesn't think that I'm important enough. And so as long as they don't say it, as long as they don't say it, I don't have to believe it. But the minute you but the verbalization of it is where it's like if, if you know, if you're in a marriage and this is to anybody in marriage, in a relationship 
And your woman goes, listen, I say what the F I want and I do what I want. Yo, you just watch your mouth. And she's disrespectful to you and calls you names. And you say, listen, I am not comfortable with the language you use. It's disrespectful. I don't want that. I don't want to engage in that way. It's not going to move this relationship on in any positive way. Um, but understand this. If this continues, this is going to be a problem. And if the next time she does it, you allow it, what you're saying is that this behavior is acceptable. But the simple fact that you said to her that this behavior makes you unhappy and she does it anyway. What she's what is she saying? Let's think about the subtext of this. What she's saying is, I don't care about your happiness. My emotions, my state of mind, the pound of flesh that I want to get, my anger is more important than your happiness. And I am willing to risk this relationship because you've already told me she either doesn't respect you because she doesn't think that you, she, she doesn't think you have any credibility. She doesn't believe that you'll do anything about it, that, you you're, that you're all talk. And if she does think it, it's even worse because she don't care. People fall out of love. Things change. People act differently. People change. People grow apart. That's okay. I, I'm not saying it, it always feels okay, but there is definitely a situation when people act that way. There is a there is a, a, a reason behind it. There's a thought process where people are nobody's crazy. People are crazy, but they ain't crazy, crazy. I seen some thugs on Mike Tyson's podcast. And I where uh, how about this? Joe Rogan, one of the biggest media dudes on the internet said that he literally made got the table the table that he does podcasting from is wider and bigger because of mike tyson and because he said that it was intimidating to have mike tyson as close to him as it was so he literally bought a new table for that mm. Mm. so even the baddest motherfuckers that, like, i understand it let me just say something follow up that is a little being afraid is not doesn't mean you're not brave. What makes you brave is to act, to take action in the presence of fear. Let me say that again. Yeah. Bravery only exists when fear exists and you still take action. There's nothing wrong with being afraid. There's nothing wrong with ap having apprehension. Even when I say later five bricks go out and talk to women and to, to play a compliment every every day, five times a day. It's I when I've heard guys, well, I'm not really that sell, that social. I'm not this. And I say, I don't I don't care. You think I give a fuck that you're not social? You are not social and your situation is what your situation is because you're not social. So what we need to do is get you to the point where you are social. Mm, you have to change it. Yeah, it's like I'm not a physical person. We'll take a boxing bath. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no easy way out. There's no tricks, you know, and that's the thing that is frustrating. We were talking about fresh and fit. They act like there's, the, you know, the pickup artist, the whole thing, that there's these tricks. And the, it's, it's a magic bullet. There just isn't. You just have to work on those things that you're afraid of working on. And believe me, I was I was the worst with it. I was the worst with talking to, to, to strange women, to strangers. The worst with it. But it takes practice and overcoming that. Yeah, it takes practice. And the reality is that it withers away at the more you practice it. So that's why you talk about laying the five bricks, which is talking to five different women every day and just giving them a compliment, a non-sexual compliment, just to become comfortable with talking to women. Yeah, that's that. That's what it's all about. But it's interesting when you're talking about closure. I think sometimes people use closure somewhat as an excuse because, yeah. Because they don't want it to be over, and there's this little glimmer of hope that if you give them the answer, hey, what went wrong, that maybe I can fix it. Maybe I can convince her. If I could just get her on the phone, I can convince her. If we could just meet up, I'll be able to convince her, and I'll say something, and she'll understand where I'm coming from. And unfortunately, you have to read the room, and you have to know, look, a lot of these things are problems long before you get to the point of needing the closure. Yeah, sure. you know. In the case of uh, fucking DJ Academics, uh, th th all these problems manifested long before. By the, 
Yeah. By the time he gets to the part where he needs closure, he's, please call me back, please. It's done. The whole thing is burning up in flames, and you're trying to put out a fire with a little water bucket. It's done. It, it was incremental. All these things that happened, the level of disrespect happened from day one. Yeah. Because guys put up with a lot of disrespect because a woman's hot and they, and they want to have sex. If you love what we're doing here, go to patreon.com. It's the best way to support us and check out all the bonus content. That's right. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. We do weekly bonus episodes. We do listener mail, dating tips. And also, if you love the show, you can go back to the archive starting from episode one. All the episodes will be there at patreon.com slash Manschool202. Shout out to Menuhin. Menuhin is the guy who who did the beats, who did our opening our opening uh, song and everything. And I remember when him, he was, I was advising him and I called him and I says, uh, he said to me, yo, my girl said she's kind of in the girls. And she said, let's have an open relationship. And I said, pack your bags. The relationship is over. Right. And he goes, oh, really? Why? I mean, you know, she said that, you know, she always was kind of into women and she really wanted to explore. I go, she's talking to you now because she's either already She's already munching somebody's bot, licking gash, clam bashing. That's either already happened or she already has somebody in mind. And her saying we can have an open relationship is so that it, it gives her plausible deniability when she does do it. No woman who loves you, and unless it's the pretense of the relationship when you go into the relationship, nobody is monogamous with you and all of a sudden wakes up one day, you know what? We've been together so long, and I just feel like my pussy is probably not. He's probably tired of my pussy. So you know what? I'm. I think with let's. You know, I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring some new pussy home for him because I feel bad for as him. As a gesture for him, <laughs> as something for him, you know, because he deserves it. He deserves. A, it. Yeah. Do you want? Do you want some new dick too? No, 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 no. I just want to take my man, and I want him to be happy. Yeah. If you find that chick, marry her. But that's again, you're talking about that you're if you're swingers or whatever that you go into the relationship knowing that. Go into it. You go into it knowing that's the type of people you are. You have those discussions. A monogamous relationship that's sweet. It's not that you're against the idea of open relationships, but when no. it, it what happens is it's pitched as an idea as the relationship after is the falling fact, apart. After the, after the fact, it's falling apart. When yeah. she still doesn't respect, when she has interests elsewhere. And so when she packs it, what she's doing, and this is what we used to call years ago, we used to call it branch swinging. It's like you, a woman will hold on to this branch while she's swinging for the new one. When she makes sure that this one can hold her weight, then she lets go of you and swings to the next branch. So you 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 can't, you, you want to be- Quick story, sorry. This just yeah. happened, Dante. And uh, I don't know if you know this guy, but we don't have to mention his name. But he's a he's a comedian, and I've known him for years. And he married somebody, a friend of ours, or, or someone. Mm, it's a friend of mine. I don't think you know him, but I don't. I still won't, you know. Uh, right. But it, it's he's not a mainstream guy. He's not a mainstream guy. Uh, he married another comedian. Yeah, right. And I knew he's a nice enough guy, and I knew when they got married, I go, this is not going to work. Right. Because she's a bit of she's got a wild reputation as a performer and just as an individual and body as count, heavy body count too. I would say probably heavy body count, but more than that, she was uh, she was doing an OnlyFans type of stuff. Okay, you know, which again, not judging, but again, I I got the vibe that like you know he's too sweet is the real reason. She's a right. wild child, and I knew that he's too kind and too sweet. And what I what happens is. A woman falls in love with the sweet guy at first, but then when he's too sweet and he can't control, yeah, you know, she admires how sweet and kind she is because she she comes from a chaotic background, so she needs that level of like sweetness and niceness. Like oh, I want a nice guy, and then she begins to walk all over him. But more importantly than that, when they got separated, you know, they post the thing online. He posts the thing and says, "Hey, we're you know we're separating. You know, we're we're doing it amicably." I don't they know don't, if you would say that anyway. Why would you post that online anyway? I, maybe that. because they're friends of friends. Like there are a lot of people who are friends of both. So you make an announcement. I, I kind of understand it because they're both ah, comedians. Bullshit. Because nobody cares unless you tell them. 
Now, if you run into me and you go, hey, how's so and so? Oh, yeah, we're not together no more. Then they'll go, oh, what happened? And, yeah, we just, you know, we moved on am amicably. About most what, about, what about this, though? Maybe the thought process. I mean, it's not something I do, but I'm trying to figure out. Maybe you do that so this way people don't ask you because you don't want to have that conversation 200 times, you know? You're not going to have it 200 times. No. no. I mean, you tell me. I, I mean, I no, would think so well, because you if you don't. Do it, you wouldn't do it. Right? No, I, I wouldn't do it, no. Okay, why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't I do it? Uh, I mean, the same reason I don't post a lot of stuff. I like to keep my stuff private. Okay, so what I'm saying is somebody does it. Yeah. It's a ridiculous thing to do. No, to, to be honest, nobody cares when you when you guys got together. I don't care how happy they say, oh, I'm so happy you guys are getting Nobody cares. We all move on with our lives, and nobody cares when you break up. When you tell them they broke, you broke up, they'll give you a response half the time, even when they're giving you a response about how tragic it is. Most 90 percent of the time, they don't care. This is just quick conversation. Yeah. To move. I'm, on, I'm the only one that asks what happened with a real concern because of the fact that I can see what you do. Yeah, because you want to help but somebody yeah. cares about what you do and they don't care about who your girl yeah. is. If you did. And then when they do, when they do, they'll ask you. But I will say this. Uh, then all of a sudden on Facebook, I started, he start. then he posts something else later on, oh, which is, go. uh, listen, I've blocked, uh, <laughs> I've blocked my ex and all that. And her friends, I just don't feel I need to see it right now. Her and her new, her, her new man. And then her page, now she's got a new boyfriend that she's flaunting that's, like that's, aggressively. And yeah. it just goes to the branch swinging. Just, it's yeah. just an example of the branch swinging where, you know, it's funny. Once I didn't hear about anybody else until the divorce happens, and then as soon as it happens, she's with somebody else very quickly. So now because, let me ask you the question: yeah. Is what do you think this was a new guy? Was it was something that was waiting in the wing? It was batter up? I, I think it was batter up. Of course it was. I think it was. I think it was. Uh, you know, I think it was the off season. Hey, listen, you've been great here. You know, hot the old hot dog and a handshake, as they say in wrestling. Thank you for your service. For sure. well, we got to sign somebody new now for this position. I wish you all the luck in the world. I'm yeah. Here. Like, your future endeavors but what's crazy about that is and this is why this is why we need to not get to the point where we're academics where we're literally uh texting 30 40 times at a time with one response back and we need to get to when it when it starts to go left you have to confront it this is what i talk about this is again goes back to the audience. not even left dante when it starts to veer when you see somebody put the left turn signal on yeah like you got to get ahead of it it's so early on in the relationship yeah yeah, yeah. because you know. if you don't it will go left yeah. it absolutely will go left nobody co tells you you f your mother your little dick motherfucker that that right that, off the bat that doesn't happen on date two Shout uh just uh, rest in peace uh uh OJ Simpson passed away. Uh, Good and, man, a great man, great man. But let me say this: you don't start off cutting people's heads off. That's true. He did work his way up to that. You, you know, you, like you fucking bitch. Then it's you slut. Then it's a choking. Then it's a choking with a slam on the wall against the wall. Then it's a smack. Then it's a punch in the stomach, like a, a bread basket shot. Then it's a side kick, a side, it's a side roundhouse after that. Then a chair, right? Yeah. Then <laughs> this then, level. Then the barbed wire with the baseball bat. Uh, no, I think we're thinking something different. Sorry, that's okay. Mick Foley. I'm thinking of wrestling. <laughs> but you build up to it. You're right. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen out of nowhere. It doesn't happen overnight. You see the signs and the red flags happening in front of you. And you have to not ignore them. And we all and you, know. And why do we ignore them? You ignore them because you think if you just let it go, it's good. then you don't want to fuck it up. You're strategizing. What you have to understand is all this nonsense that we see on the Internet. Women are the prize. No, look, don't get me wrong. There's great women out there. And it, but you understand something. The nature of relationships is that when you decide to be in a relationship, you will go places you don't want to go. You will do things you don't want to do. You'll have to listen to things you don't have to listen to. You have to spend money you don't want to have to spend. You have to meet people you don't want to meet. That is that is part of the package that comes with the best standard with the package. And what happens overall is that because you because they have women have taught you that they are the prize because you have a desire to be 
you you want to you want to use them as a as a as a dick cozy, then you're willing to you're willing to to de denigrate your manhood, your credibility, your authenticity, all of it. You're willing to do it all just if I could just get in. It's it's ridiculous. And then when you get out, it's most of the time, ninety percent of the time, it's a nut. But is is it? It's rarely is is it extraordinary. Rarely is it extraordinary. I, I talk, man. My my body count is way over two grand. I'm I'm not gonna estimate beyond two grand, mm. but my point is, I can I can count on maybe two hands the times that the sex was extraordinary. And a lot of times when the sex wasn't extraordinary, we what nece wasn't necessarily somebody that I was really into, and so on. So it's like it takes a lot to to kind of where that measures up but even if it was extraordinary ill you it, still can't what you still can't degrade yourself you can't still nothing is worth your happiness because the problem is like you say it's not just putting your happiness first if if it made her feel better it would be fine yeah the sacrifices would be fine yeah. but it doesn't it doesn't fix the problems it doesn't let it go and it's she just doesn't appreciate you yeah in fact, what you do is you set her on a path to 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 liken you less. So to, to, just to, to be able to go, man, shout out to I was uh shout out to Major. Major, Major I was talking to Major the other day. Major was like uh he, he was like he went out, he he had a date, um, and he was hooking up with this girl, and the girl called him. The girl, girl was into him, right? And he called up and she was like, she, she gets on the phone. She's like, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the date tomorrow. He goes, uh, he goes, no, you're not. He goes, look, let's just postpone when you feel better. She was ready to she was ready to be. What do they call a um, typhoon Mary? <laughs> oh, typhoid, typhoid Mary. Yeah, typhoid. she was ready to infect him and everybody else because she dug him so much. And he was like, look. It's fine. We can we can reschedule. And I was trying to explain to him how 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 much it took him to get to the point where he because a year ago from where he started to turn down a date, even if it's not a he yeah. went out and got sick, if he would have got sick, she'd have, she'd have passed all AIDS and and COVID <laughs> And herpes and she bird eats, flu, swine flu, swine flu, rickets, skunk flu, herby, all the new ones, chicken pox, mump. He got he would there was a time when he would have autism. Taken, I think and, you could spread and, that. <laughs> and, and, and to just to get to a place where you're confident enough to say, listen, relax, we can reschedule this. Why don't you take care of yourself and we reschedule? And then think about what the subtext of that is to her. Oh, this guy really cares about me. Even if he's going, yeah, I don't want that bitch to get me sick. But but the fact that you're saying, I my health and this situation, I'm willing to wait, I'm willing to postpone this, and maybe risk you not calling me back. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.